Hi everybody, welcome back to Making Bass Jigs. This is part three, making skirts. In part one, we poured the lead. In part two, we painted and added the weed guards. And in this video, what we're gonna do is take skirting material of different color combinations, put it all together, allowing you to take that jig out to your favorite body of water and catch a giant bass on something that you yourself have created. It's a lot of fun. Stick around and let's do this. Oh, just one quick thing. I would really appreciate it if you find this video helpful to you or you found parts one and two helpful that you just give me a thumbs up down here or you subscribe to the page. And I'd also love to see your feedback in the comment section below and would really appreciate that. Thanks. What I want to show you here are a few creations of mine and jigs that I've built recently. Uh, I also want to add that if you find this whole process a little too cumbersome or you don't want to buy all the parts and materials necessary to make jigs, I sell them on eBay. You can search NYC Outdoors, and uh, I also will be selling them on a website here in the near future. But overall, I strongly encourage you to make these jigs yourself. Uh, the whole process of just getting the materials gathered, pouring, painting, putting the skirts together, and going out there and catching a bass cannot be matched. It's absolutely the most satisfying feeling. So anyhow, I'm going to gather some materials here. And we're gonna get started. Well, I've got some stuff set out here, and this is a small indication of the amount of jig making uh, materials I own. But like a true fisherman, you know, you can never have enough of one thing. You gotta buy every single color combination on earth and every different option, or else you think that you're at a disadvantage when it comes to going out there to try to catch these things. So um, I guess that's why the big tackle stores, you know, have been accused of catching fishermen rather than fish and I'm one of those fishermen they catch. So I uh, just want to let you see here, this is one box with just a few, a few, pardon the pun, uh, jigs here that I have actually poured and painted myself and added the weed guards to. And here is you know, another box of the same thing, more that I've painted and poured. Um, these two boxes right here are mainly focused on when we did the adding weed guards I've got this tray on top here that has multiple types of weed guards in different colors uh, there's some reds in there there's some green pumpkins browns blacks and uh, you see the Teflon pins in there that I was using there for a while but now I just drill the jig heads out uh, there's that there's the drill bit um, the other box the lid on that one has in it what we're going to be using today and that is for making skirts it has the different bands there's all types of different bands in here uh, there are natural colored bands there's black there there's clear here and you can buy bands from several different suppliers in multiple colors so what I'll do now that you've seen just a little piece of what I own as far as skirt making goodies I will get out some skirts and some tools and we'll get moving on putting the skirts together. Okay, I've got some skirting material laid out here and a couple tools, but one thing I wanted to mention really quickly is that when you order your skirt material, uh, some of the companies send you the skirting material nicely organized and nice and flat in the packages that they send you. Um, you can also order from other companies and I've been ordering from couple different suppliers for a long time and the same one and I go back to them over and over because I like their materials but some of the companies you'll end up getting your skirting material and bags just all jumbled up like that I generally will take the skirting material out and rebag it and make sure that it's all laid out flat because what will happen is over time especially if the skirting material is set stored away for any period of time is the actual tabs will start sticking together. All the individual strands will start sticking together and they'll get all kind of gnarled and crumpled up. Well, there is a solution for that. If you find a bag like that, don't throw it out. You can take the tab itself and just run it between your hand like this and shake it and it generally pops right out nice and flat again. So you can use those, don't throw them away. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to make some skirts. So what I'm gonna do is take a skirt economy tool uh, this thing costs about five bucks I guess that's why it's called an economy tool and it consists of these three parts the nose cone that you use to feed the bands up onto the body of the tool itself you just simply 
put a band on the nose, roll it down until it gets onto the body of the tool, take the nose cone out, feed the wire inside the tool, take your skirt tabs, I'm gonna use a green pumpkin, a burnt pumpkin, and then I wanna use just a half an orange here. So you just take the skirt tab itself, you just tear it, it's straightforward. Just tear it in half, find the center point or approximate center point and just tear it in half right there and layer them together. And once they're all together, you can just put them right on the hook here and you pull them about a third of the way through the tool itself because you want one end to be a little bit longer because that's going to be what is going to hang out over the jig itself. After they're in position, you just roll the band off, and now it's all put together. All three tabs are there, bound together. Take a container and just line up the ends of the tabs, and take a pair of scissors and cut off both sides, and you end up with a fully completed skirt right there. Um, and I'll just do this as I use the different tools. I'll go ahead and put this this skirt onto a jig and slide it right on around. And there we have a completed bass jig that's kind of ugly right now. And the reason that is is because we haven't trimmed it properly. And I will do that right there. And it looks a little bit better there. That's using tool number one. Uh, tool number two is this pair of pliers right here. These pliers actually just work by, you're putting the band over top of the tip of the tool here, and then you squeeze the pliers together and it separates the band. Um, I've used these actually for a really long time. And um, I prefer them just because it takes out the multi-step process of the economy tool and it also allows you sometimes with the economy tool you can't get the layers to sit together properly or the in the layers that you want them or the sequence you want them because at times you're going to want you know your jig to have orange on the back side and like your pumpkin in the middle and your green in the front so it'll mimic you know the forage like a sunfish or something like that that or bluegill that might be you know near the bottom so with these pliers the process changes just a little bit um, like I say it's just you know less moving parts and you simply spread the band apart you can see the space right there that it creates and you have to feed the ends of the tabs into the band just pull them right on through same thing about a third of the skirt left exposed on one side and about two thirds on the other side and then just let the pliers go and you have a completed skirt once again. And same process obviously at this point is just cutting the ends of the skirt material, take it and put it right on a bass jig. You can see here the different layers of the material. You have the green, you have the pumpkin in the middle and you've got the, the orange that remains on the bottom and that works out a little bit better with this tool than it does with the economy tool. So here I will just simply put it right back on the jig and just like that have yet another completed bass jig. Now I want to show you a tool that is a whole different beast uh, and I have waited a long time to get this um, and I finally have it and when you want to make jigs at a very high rate of speed it is it's absolutely incomparable uh, when it comes to the other two tools so I'll show you that right now okay here's the tool that I was really excited to show you uh, it's definitely a little bit more expensive uh, I'm just under $200 in 2017 but uh, the way it works is you take your band material and you put it right over these two fingers right here and when you pull the handle down it separates the band so you can run your skirt material right between and then you just release the handle and your skirts done so 
Uh, I'll show you a couple examples of that right now. Put the layers together. It's really kind of as quick as your hands can put them together. My hands are not as fast as they were 20 years ago, but uh, it's fun nonetheless. And just like with the pouring lead video, I mentioned I could do this all day long. I literally could sit and do this all day long. Put the layers in there, grab the orange tab to kind of keep that free and clear of the other colors, pull it up to a point where I know it's supposed to go to, shut that, and I'll do one more here. Go ahead and preload this with the band. Grab the skirt tabs in the color combination I want. Grab the layers, spread and feed, and release. Pull it out, and there I have in a very, very, very short amount of time three completed layers that went really fast. So um, I will show you an example here of what you can do like on a Sunday afternoon. And that is, <laughs> you can put a few skirt layers together. So that's, that's kind of real, real fast. And what I also want to mention too, is when you do your skirt layers, if you, if you, put together a bunch of them in a color combination that you know you're going to use frequently, like a green pumpkin or something, you know, a black blue, um, you can absolutely leave the layers uncut and just lay them flat in a bag and leave them like that because they'll kind of, the strands will stay straight for a longer amount of time. And then when you cut them and put them on the jig, they'll have a little more life to them. So. Um, that's just one recommendation there. So overall, your three tool options are the economy tool for about five bucks, and that is a perfectly useful tool that you can build thousands of jigs with. Uh, the pliers, which I have used for years because I feel like I can layer the material a little bit better using this. I have a little more control over the layering. And then ultimately, obviously, my own personal preference is the production tool that's seen here. Um, it is absolutely, hands down, the fastest tool I've ever used. And I can literally, in a couple hours, I can put, you know, like 200 skirts together. And my reason for wanting to put skirts together at that rate of speed is, as I mentioned earlier, I sell them on eBay at NYC Outdoors, uh, and I will be opening a website up that I will be selling the jigs on as well. But you don't need a tool this robust or something this expensive whatsoever you can just build very simply with the other two tools I showed you they're all fully capable of doing the same exact operation well I really hope you've enjoyed watching making bass jigs part three making skirts and when you combine that with parts one and two I hope you have the ammunition you need to go out there and build some jigs customized to your local region or wherever you plan on going fishing but once again thank you very much and as I said in the beginning I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up down here and also subscribe to the page. Along with that, I would really, really love to see your feedback down below in the comments section, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So please take parts one, two, and three of making bass jigs, get out there and catch yourself some giant bass, and let me know about it. I look forward to hearing from you.